Mr. Orson Wilde is here, and I'm going to stay with Miss Alice. What? Did you forget? Orson Wilde, he, you know, the star of American theatre. And he's visiting and staying with us. You did forget? No, no, not, not that. I, I meant you wanting to stay with Miss Alice. Yes, that's right. Miss Alice suggested it. She told me you couldn't possibly refuse. Okay, hey guys, welcome back to Sherlock Holmes. This is the start of chapter three. Infamy. Um. I don't think I want to stay on that, Alice, because if you remember back a little while ago, it sounds like she knows a little bit, a little bit about Sherlock Holmes, and uh, I don't know, it's something a bit dodgy about her, so I'm going to propose another solution, because I don't think we should let her, because I think something could happen, like, I like how there's like a main story, an actual main story, and then there's a few within like, obviously each chapter there's still a main story going on. Outside of all these little things that are happening. So I think this could turn out into a big investigation at the end. Involving her. So I'm going to propose another solution. Why don't you stay with Mrs. Hudson? Oh, but Miss Caitlin has more in common with Miss Alice. And they get along so well. Guess what, Mrs. Hudson? Mr. Wilde is here to study my father's character for his next play. And he won't be disappointed, will he? Father is so pig-headed. I can't believe it. The great Sherlock Holmes standing in front of me. I'm sure that our two brains will. Brains. <laughs> okay, let's do a character um, portrait. His eyes? No? It's, it's, what are we looking for here? Ah, scarf. Follows fashion trends, okay. We've got this badge on here, American. Okay, American Pride wants to attract attention. I think American Pride. Tobacco, so he smokes. British brand of tobacco. Mm. Maybe it is for attention. Personalized boots, a pocket watch, a pocket mirror, self affected actor's tool. Actor's tool? I don't think he uses it as a tool. Does he emit a pocket mirror? Really? I think it's self affected. That's what I'm going with. Yeah, we're valid like this. See what happens. Okay, complete. Excellent. Uh, there's a staff from Megan Theatre who came to London to study the Royal Shirk Homes. It is probable that he began his study previously. Smokes the same brand of tobacco as Holmes. Oh. Watson is na 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 narcissistic. I have no idea what that means, guys. And follows fashion, admires his own reflection. The brooch pinned to his breast displays his American pride. Okay, Mr. Wilde, your room. Charming, <laughs> this is such a fascinating city. We need to talk. I'd rather not. You're going to be angry again. Goodbye, Mr. Wilde. Is it five o'clock already? I think I might go and ask Mrs. Hudson for some tea. <laughs> okay, we'll have to see you later. Find out more information about Orson Wilde. Okay, can we do that over here? No. Ah, yeah, here we go. We're going to his room that he's staying in. While Trudy has a perfect disguise kit, do actors really need all this? It's got, it's got lots of stuff. What's this? 
Oh. Face powder of an I don't know why, quality. but that made me made me blink for some reason when that sort of sprayed out on screen. This must be grease paint. And then there's brushes. Oh, what's this? I use the same brushes for makeup. You got a little bit of your face, mate. I forgot my hat. Father? I'm just checking um You've got something on your face. Is it makeup? Uh it uh, might be. I uh, practicing my disguises, you know me. <sighs> no, don't, don't touch that. No, no. Ah, Mrs. Hudson, with our tea. Not quite. We have a visitor. However, the lady is not so much angry as perplexed. Good day to you, gentlemen. My name is Mary Sutherland. I have come to you, Mr. Holmes, because I would give everything I have to know what has become of Mr. Hosmer Angel. Why the haste, Miss Sutherland? Mr. Hosmer Angel has disappeared. And my father, Mr. Winterbank, will do nothing. It makes me so angry. Okay, let's do a character portrait. I just got to know, has she been wearing, like, glasses or something too close? Yeah. Just call me Sherlock. Expensive brooch. She's flashy, she's rich. Uh, I don't think she's rich, I think she's flashy. Yeah. She's got a ring. On her left hand. I think it's an engagement ring. Okay, what else we got? Oh, she's got different shoe, odd, odd shoes. Or boots even. I didn't notice boots. Okay, well we'll validate that anyway. Imprecise. Maybe she's rich then. Can we change this? Okay, okay, we can't change it, we can't change it, so we have to keep it imprecise. Let's ask about our file. Mr. Windybank is your stepfather, surely, since the name is different? Well, indeed, I call him father, although he is barely older than myself. And your mother is alive? Oh, yes, although I wasn't best pleased when she married again, and so soon after father's death, and to a man so much younger than herself. What is your connection with Mr. Hosmer Angel? I met him at the Gasfitters' Ball. Mr. Winderbank did not wish for me and Mother to attend. He never did wish us to go anywhere, but this time I was quite set on it. Fortunately, he left for France upon some business, and so didn't have any say in it. And I met Mr. Angel that night. We met again after that and would take walks together, but then Father returned, and we could no longer meet. Okay. Yeah, let's ask her why her stepfather was against this. Why was your stepfather against your going anywhere? Well, he didn't like anything of that sort. He used to say that a woman should be happy in her own family circle. Did Mr. Hosmer Angel make no attempt to see you? Well, father was going off again in a week. And Hosmer wrote and said that it would be better for us not to see each other until father had gone. After that, he stopped writing. Okay. We've still got that income down the bottom. Let's ask him um, address first. Where does Mr. Angel live? I don't know exactly. I address all of his letters to the Leadenhall Street Post Office for connection. I think that's where we could be off. 
That could be our first destination. Were you engaged? Oh yes, Mr. Holmes. Right after the first walk. That was quick. Jeez. Love and first sight, all that. Love at first walk in her case. Do you have your own income? I do, from an inheritance. It was left to me by my uncle Ned in Auckland. Then you have all that you could wish for, naturally. Well, I live at home and don't wish to be a burden to my family, so they have the use of the money. Is there anything else that you can tell me about Mr. Angel? He is a very shy man. He would rather walk with me in the evening, so as to be discreet. I put a missing persons notice in last Saturday's Chronicle. Here's a copy, and oh, a letter you. from him. Ha <laughs> ha, a love letter. Hmm, yes, I see. As I anticipated, this validates my deductions perfectly. What deductions, Mr... Mr. Wilde. Holmes, tell her. Tell her what? Resolve Mary Southern's case. Okay, okay. We got a deduction already. Okay. So now he lives. Okay, dints and different boots. Okay, that means. Alright, poor eyesight's okay. I don't think these are gonna match. No, okay. That's all for now then. Mr. Holmes, what do you think about the letter on the table? Do you think it will. No, let's have a little look. Public notice of disappearance. A gentleman by the name of Mr. Hosma Angel has mysteriously vanished. Mr. Angel is of around 5 feet 7 inches in height, of strong build with a sorrow complexion. He has black hair with bushy side whiskers and a moustache. He's likely to be wearing tinted spectacles. On the last item, Mr. Angel was dressed in a black silk frock coat, the black waistcoat, and grey Harris tweed trousers. He is known to have been employed in an office in Laden Hill Street. Okay. If you are in possession of any information, please come forward. There will be awards for any help given in finding this gentleman. And then we have the letter. My dear love, please don't worry your sweet head. Do you believe that I would say anything to your family who understand nothing of love? We had a wonderful time together, didn't we? While your father was in France, such a short time, but it was enough for me to know that you are my life. I would spend every minute from now on with you. I wish that it were possible. I love you very much and I'm waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more upon his travels so we can meet again. Okay, so it sounds like maybe just... So yeah, her stepfather obviously doesn't like her maybe maybe dating or being around boys, I guess. Look. This is strange. The love oh, oh something down here. What's this? Good quality paper, quite smooth. Fairly common ink, nothing special. Okay, we've got this, Hosmer. Hosmer Angel decided not to leave his signature. I'm waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more. We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? Miss Sutherland only met with Hosmer Angel while the stepfather was absent. Let's study this letter more closely. Ah. There are some letters with typographical defects. Miss Sutherland, do you have any other letters from Mr. Angel? Unfortunately not. But I've brought my father's letter from Paris. Here it is. Okay, okay, so I was just seeing, so we can look at it. Okay, so dear Mary, the stepfather's letter. Is also Maybe they know each other. Oh, that's interesting. Miss Sutherland's stepfather's signature. Mm, I hope that you'll be an obedient girl. Mm, take my advice. Stay at home. The stepfather is trying to keep the door. Yeah, he also open. doesn't like her going out.
quite common paper with a light yellow tint. Fairly common ink, nothing special. Let's study this letter more closely. Okay, is it the same? Oh, the, oh, the M here and the K. There are some letters with typographical defects. Both letters have typographical defects. They merit further attention. Yeah, M. And what was one? A K. Uh, wait, let's have a look. Is there a K anywhere? Uh, <coughs> wonderful time together. Oh, that's such a short time, but it's enough for me. Oh, here we go. This letter has a defect. One more letter with a defect. Ah, there's the same letter with the same defect in both instances. Another letter match with the same defects. Oh, wait, okay, so it's got to be another letter. Oh, the and. One uh, where's that? Let's have a little look. Oh, yeah, here we go. Another letter match with the same defects. So, based on the specific defects, we could say that these letters were composed on the same typewriter. That's interesting. So we've got a deduction. Stepfather's letter, Hospital Angel's letter. Surely it's not a coincidence. I think it's one typewriter. Have you got any others? Oh, here we go. Maybe the opportunity to socialise without a father's not yep stepfather stepfather's knowledge. Sorry. Okay, so she has an income, but she stays at home because she's got an inheritance. Okay, so the family have an interest in Mary remaining single as they have access to her inheritance, or Mary and her stepfather trusted one another. Mary was told to remain at home as her stepfather believed it would be better for her. Nah, I think that, I think it's profit. And I don't know if this is going to be one. It is. Wow. All the clues have gone to deductions already. For some reason, the hospital angel met with Mary only when her stepfather was away on business trips. Mary's stepfather was unaware of her relationship with Hosmer Angel. Hosmer Angel was over resistant and shy man who did not want to cause trouble for Mary. And I think strange behaviour, yeah, because he only saw, only sees her when he's a, not around. Cool, we've got one. So Mary's stepfather lied. He didn't take his business trip as he found out that Mary was disobeying him. Mary's stepfather took his business trip, which gave Mary the opportunity to secretly meet with Hosmer Angel. Oh yeah, he might have found out. That's why it's on the same typewriter. Because he wrote both letters. Because he had, he's had to go away. Hosmer, he's gone missing. Yeah. Oh my god, we've got to one already. Mr. Winderbank is Mr. Angel. Okay, so Mary's stepfather, Mr. Winderbank, adopted a disguise and played the role of Mr. Hosmer Angel to keep her stepdaughter and her money close to home. It will cause Mary a great deal of distress if she is told of the true identity of Hosmer Angel. Mary Sutherland is an honest and gentle young lady who should be allowed to live her own life. She does not deserve to be deceived in such a fashion. Continue the investigation. I feel like it's the same situation as the last one, even though we went back to the same conclusion. But I feel like it's a bit, uh, bit early. To uh, come to such a conclusion already. So we'll keep that in mind. But if you guys think that one of that I should tell her the, her the truth or believe this is the uh, actual ending, then let me know in the comments, and I will. Uh, well follow through with this and uh, probably tell her the truth I mean I wouldn't want to hide the truth 
I think I'd, I'd tell her the truth, definitely. But yeah, if you think uh, this is true, this is the correct outcome already, then uh, let me know. But at the moment, I think it's a bit early, so we're going to continue the investigation, which will carry on. We're going to end it here, and that will carry on next episode, where we're likely to uh, travel. Let's just... So we've got to that already, so let's uh, come out of this. Just see what happens. I think this case is fairly obvious, don't you, Mr. Holmes? We solved Mary Southern's case. Okay, is this it then? Okay, I think this is it. We're gonna, we're gonna, um, yeah, we're gonna tell her the truth then. Let's do it. Confirm your moral choice. Yes. You should try to let Mr. Hosmer Angel vanish from your memory, as he has done from your life. Then you don't think I'll see him again? I fear not. Then what has happened to him? Your stepfather married your mother for her money, and also enjoyed the use of your income. But with your personal advantages, it was clear that you would not remain single for long, even with him keeping you at home. He disguised himself and reappeared as Mr. Hosmer Angel. He brought you as far as the church door and then conveniently slipped away. To bring you to this conclusion in such a dramatic manner that it would leave a permanent impression upon your mind. You have been cruelly tricked, Miss Sutherland. Oh, Mr. Holmes. No, I, I, I can't believe it. But we were engaged. Oh, it's horrible to think about. But thank you for all you have done, Mr. Holmes. Holmes. Could have been more diplomatic. Sorry. Was that it? That couldn't have been the whole of chapter three, could it? I just see what happens when this loads. I don't know if it's going to change to something different. It still says infamy, so I don't know if there's like a couple of mini. things like quests within this chapter I'm not sure but um that was very quick okay we just continue should we quickly continue I think we'll continue and just see what happens okay at night let's have let's uh, see what happens here quickly what is going on Throwing something through the window. Mr. Holmes, is everything all right? Oh my God! Go back to your flat yeah, and stay there with Kate. Quiet. Calm down, Toby. Okay, now, we'll just quickly carry on. I don't want to make this video too long. We'll just see what's uh, what's happened here. It's ticking. What is it? Examine. I don't want to move. I want. Uh, I see wires inside. They could be connected to the cover. Let's bend it. Is it, is it a is it a bomb? Explosive? A fancy ticking homemade dip. Oh, we've got two minutes to diffuse it. I have two minutes to diffuse it. There are wires attached to the bell and hammer. Aha! This solenoid protects the bomb from being easily diffused. If it loses its power supply, it will close contact between the secondary chain wires and the bomb will explode. A source of electricity for the detonation. package with explosive material there are wires going in and out it's useless to predict how they might be tangled up inside okay so how are we gonna undo this then what did we cut this one do it Whoops. 
A fancy ticking homemade gift from a secret admirer. Okay, so it's not that one. It. There are wires attached to the bell and hammer. When the alarm triggers, the bomb will explode. Ah, wait, I think we can't. This one. No. Wrong. Wrong again. A fancy ticking home. Right, so sorry we've got to work this out, okay. I have two minutes to defuse it. The source of the source see for the destination. There are wires attached to the bell and hammer when the alarm Okay, when the alarm triggers the bomb explodes. Aha! This solenoid protects the bomb from being easily diffused. If it loses its power supply, it will close contact between the secondary chain wires and the bomb will explode. A package with explosive material. There are wires going in and out. It's useless to predict how they might be tangled up inside. Okay, is that is that everything, is it? Okay, so we've got to diffuse it. How but which But what first? This? Like I don't know. Well we we might as well try this one this time. Oh, done it. Oof. Oh wait, yeah, because this one stops it. So if I cut that the one on the left first then it, that will make it explode, the thing that I'm cutting first. So then I guess we do this one. Nice. And then this one. Okay, so that's cut off. So then we can do this one. Nice. This one. Nice. Then this one. Then this one, then this one, then this one. We've done it. We diffused it. Third time. We worked it out. <laughs> what happened? Just a small bomb. Somebody wants to kill me? What for? I don't believe that you were the target. Who then? Um, Sherlock. Mr. Holmes. Are you all right? I saw the bloke. I tried to catch him, but he escaped. Okay, guys, this might be a slightly long episode. I'm sorry about this, but we're going to carry it on anyway. Can you describe the man? Uh, he was thin, about five five, with black hair and a hair lip. Wiggins, tell us everything you saw. The fellow was watching your place, so I thought maybe he's a client. But then he took something out of his jacket and threw it, smashing your window. I shouted at him and he took off. I grabbed him by the sleeve, but he wriggled out of his jacket and left it. I'm sorry I didn't catch him, Mr. Holmes. You did very well, Wiggins. Now, let's take a look at that jacket. Here it is. Good job, Wiggins. Here's a penny. Oh, thanks, Mr. Holmes. Okay, before we examine the attacker's belongings or anything and get in, my first instinct is actually thinking it's um the one previously. It could be her stepfather. <laughs> that suddenly wants us because obviously we kind of ruined it there. But yeah, before we get any further, before we examine his clothes or anything, that is going to be it for this episode. So it's a bit of a long one. But, I mean, even uh, resolved the case in this one anyway. So thank you very much for watching as always, guys. Hope you enjoy Sherlock Holmes. And I'll see you next time.